Coming in at number 10, she's not the best actor. Madonna has completely dominated the music industry, but sadly that doesn't always translate to the silver screen. She's been in 19 films throughout the course of her career, but not all of them were shiners. Starring in the 1996 film adaptation of the musical Vita, earned the singer a Golden Globe for Best Actress in a Musical or Comedy. But on the flip side, she's also won nine Razzies. Razzies are the infamous antithesis of the Oscars for worst performances, and she won the dubious honor of worst actress of the century in 2000. Rough play if you ask me. She's also turned down some pretty famous roles, including as one of the leading girls in Showgirls. While she's likely best known for acting and singing, she's also directed two feature films. One was in 2007 called Filth and Wisdom, the other in 2011 called W.E. Neither of these movies received the warmest of receptions from critics or audiences, and it was pretty universally panned as far as movies go. And at number 9, she suffers from brontophobia. Madonna reportedly has a massive phobia called brontophobia. Brontophobia is a fear of thunder and lightning. When she sees a storm coming, reportedly she closes all the blinds on windows and puts on giant headphones to drown out the sound of the thunder. At the end of the day, despite being one of the biggest pop stars the world has ever known, she's still very much human, with her own flaws and fears like the rest of us. Next up on the list is she dated John F. Kennedy Jr. While we all know of Madonna's infamous relationship over the years to people like Sean Penn, Vanilla Ice, Dennis Rodman, Lenny Kravitz, and Tupac, Madonna also dated the former president's son. Her disastrous marriage to Sean Penn is well recorded, and it's an open secret that it blew up due to accusations of infidelity, general chaos, and physical harm towards one another. Sean became known for his unpredictable outbursts and temper tantrums with a major jealous streak. He would often fly off the rails when he saw another man getting close to Madonna. That being said, Following her messy divorce from Sean Penn, Madonna briefly dated John F. Kennedy Jr. for six months. In a memoir penned about the president's son that spends a bit of time delving into his romantic past, he's been linked to other celebrities like Darlie Hanna and Sarah Jessica Parker. But one of the least documented relationships he's been in was surprisingly with Madonna. Madonna was far from a big hit with the Kennedy family, with the pop star heavily leaning into the Marilyn Monroe imagery. Can't imagine Jackie Kennedy being a big fan of that one. And the general disapproval of her religious iconography for fashion purposes. But the brief relationship absolutely did not last long, mostly because despite Madonna's recent past with Sean Penn, she actually found Kennedy to be much more frightening. Quote, whereas Sean would act out, perhaps give a photographer a body shot just to vent, somehow John's way seemed more personal. Madonna said that he would get up in her face, maybe an inch away, and scream at her at the top of his lungs when they were in a fight. I'm glad she left when she did. At number seven, Kim Kardashian. This summer, as Kanye West went on a Twitter rant about his wife Kim, mother-in-law Chris, and even his kids, all eyes were on him and his family because of some of the things he was saying. It was believed that Kanye was suffering from some sort of manic episode as a result of his bipolar disorder. Kim Kardashian released a statement to address his recent online behavior where she said, quote, he is a brilliant but complicated person who on top of the pressures of being an artist and a black man who experienced the painful loss of his mother has to deal with the pressure and isolation that is heightened by his bipolar disorder. Those who are close with Kanye know his heart and understand his words sometimes do not align with his intentions." End quote. Her statement about her husband's mental health was sort of a heads up to fans as well as the media that Kanye was experiencing a lot at this time and that his actions are sometimes taken out of hand because of his mental illness. It wasn't necessarily a warning but more so some important information about the rapper as to not judge him too harshly. Kim's statement told us that he has this trouble sometimes and that we should be patient with him at times like these. At number 6, Kris Jenner. Back in 2016, after a bout of controversial tweeting and public scandals, Kris Jenner warned her kids to stay away from Kanye. 2016 was a tumultuous year for the rapper as he got into a number of Twitter beefs and was even hospitalized for a psychiatric emergency. Well, in an effort to distance her family from Kanye's drama, she advised her youngest daughters, Kendall and Kylie, to stay away from him and to not trust him. An insider told sources that, quote, Kris has advised her daughters to not discuss any upcoming business opportunities or deals with Kanye, saying the less he knows, the better. Kris was afraid 
said that Kanye would try and make Kendall and Kylie doubt their business deals, make them feel guilty about their decisions, and give them bad advice. One of the reasons why Chris was so adamant about keeping her daughter's business away from Kanye is because earlier that year, the rapper went on a Twitter rant about Kylie and her potential business deal with the brand Puma, where he said, quote, 1000% there will never be a Kylie Puma anything. That's on my family. 1000% Kylie is on Yeezy team. Kylie's partnership with the brand was almost ruined because of this, and so Mama Chris made sure that it would never happen again. At number five, Lord. In 2018, singer Lord accused Kanye West of stealing her stage design. This was in response to a stage design that Kanye and Kid Cudi used for a performance at a music festival that summer that was pretty much identical to what Lord used at her 2017 Coachella performance. The performers used an identical transparent box suspended over the stage as a focal point for their concerts, and Lord was not having it. Lord spoke out about Kanye's creative theft, saying, "Quote: I'm proud of the work I do, and it's flattering when other artists feel inspired by it." It to the extent that they choose to try it on themselves, but don't steal, not from women or anyone else, not in 2018 or ever." End quote. She warned him against stealing, but also seemingly warned other artists about his stealing since this wasn't a new thing for Kanye. In the past, he's also been accused of similar plagiarism from Nine Inch Nails, and Taylor Swift has also commented on his stage design in her song, Look What You Made Me Do. At number four, Obama. Shortly after Kanye announced in 2015 that he would be running for president in 2020, then President Barack Obama had had some thoughts on the matter. While speaking at a fundraising event, Obama poked fun at Kanye's presidential dreams where he gave him some advice, like telling him he needs to quote, be cool with dealing with strange characters who behave like they're on a reality TV show, an obvious reference to keeping up with the Kardashians. He also poked fun at Kanye's outspoken nature in reference to his Twitter rampages, as well as his background of being a quote, black guy from the south side of Chicago with a funny name. Though it was all supposed to be jokes, there was also a message behind Obama's bit, which sort Sort of warned the American people against voting for someone like Kanye because he can't be taken seriously, especially in the world of politics. We saw this over this past summer at his campaign rally where things got out of hand, so maybe Obama was right. Coming in at number three, Madonna doesn't like being a material girl. One little known fact about Madonna is that she has remarked that she regrets ever recording the track that would become her moniker, Material Girl. It is one of her most famous songs and became the nickname that she is most often represented by. Similarly, she also does doesn't feel like she wants to be associated with a song like a virgin either. Quote, I like them both because they were iconic and provocative at the time, but also they're so unlike me. I am not a materialistic person, and I certainly wasn't a virgin. And by the way, how can you be like a virgin? I like the play on words. I thought they were clever. They're so geeky, they're cool. She also said that she never expected Material Girl to become as big of a hit as it was. Quote, I've never been a good judge of what things are going to be huge or not. I'm resourceful, and if I ended up in a log cabin in the middle of the forest, that would work too. These things are not mandatory for my happiness. That's what I meant by I'm not a materialistic person. Coming in at number two, Madonna and Prince wanted to make a musical together. In a 1989 interview with Madonna, she was asked who her musical aspirations are, and she named Prince as a vocalist that she admired. She then discussed her collaboration called Love Song. Quote, we've been friends for years and admire each other's work, so we'd always talked about getting together to write. And in fact, there was a moment last year where we were possibly going to write a musical together. I went to a studio in Minnesota and worked on some stuff just to get a feel of what it would be like to collaborate. She then stated that her and Prince had a lot of difficulty creating a completed track. After she worked with him consistently for a few days, she left the studio. She no longer had any interest in writing a musical with him. Then, a while later, Prince approached Madonna with a demo that she enjoyed, but they ended up having to write the full track together long distance because Prince lived in Minneapolis and Madonna hated Minneapolis. The track, Love Song, did not chart the Billboard Hot 100. And finally at number one, Madonna regrets posing naked for her book. While this article was posted quite a few years ago when Madonna was 49 years old, and she's 63 now, Madonna has stated that she seriously regrets posing naked so often in her youth. In her 1992 book, Sex, she believes that the reception of it was less about the beauty of the female form and expressing sexuality, and more so about how people branded her as an exhibitionist. She admitted that, at one point, she was much less adventurous, branding herself as prude. Quote, I really was not getting up to much. I don't think I was as naughty as I could have been. I was quite straight. I was a geek when I was young. I did not really do much that was interesting. I think from what I got from this interview, it was less about the actual posing naked that she regrets, but more so about the public's reception about the book. 
It branded her as loose rather than expressing beauty through art. And at number 10, Harry and Meghan are related. This should be taken with a slight grain of salt because at some point if we go back far enough, we're pretty much all related. So as we know, Meghan was born American and of course Harry is British, but they still share some DNA. The Daily Mail did a genealogical investigation where it was revealed that Harry and Meghan are cousins dating back to the 15th century. The connection is on Markle's father's side. But of course, it's 15 generations back, so there are no real connections still intact. And there's zero chance anyone will be related at family gatherings. And at number 9, always wanted to be famous. An old friend of Meghan's came forward after the engagement claiming that Meghan always wanted to be famous, even since childhood. She not only loved being the center of attention from a young age, she was very calculated in who she spent her time with. Nanaki Pretty told the Daily Mail, quote, All I can say now is I think that Meghan was calculated, very calculated in the way she handled people and relationships. She is very strategic in the way she cultivates circles of friends. Pretty also claimed that Meghan always wanted to be famous. Royal scholars have pointed out that this trait is a positive for Meghan and Harry's relationship. Apparently most of Harry's other relationships didn't work out because the women he was with did not like all the attention. But clearly this is not an issue for Meghan. Penny Jenner, author of Prince Harry, brother soldier's son, told The Express, quote, One of the advantages of Meghan is because she is in the public eye, she likes that. The real problem with Harry's girlfriends in the past is that they absolutely hated the media attention that scared them off. And at number 8, Meghan cheated with Harry. After Meghan was confirmed to be dating Prince Harry, it came out that there might have been some overlap between her relationship with Harry and with her ex who was Canadian chef Corey Vitellio. Before she started dating Harry, Meghan was seen out with the chef on multiple occasions. Nobody thought anything about her past relationship until a fan noticed that Vanity Fair changed the date when Harry and Meghan started dating from May to July of 2016, because apparently she was still with the chef in May. Harry and Meghan first met at the Invictus Games in Toronto, and when Harry asked for her number, the Telegraph reported that she was still with her ex. The Daily Mail actually asked the chef about his split with Meghan, and he claimed that he and Meghan had, quote, parted permanently when Harry came on scene. However, he did somewhat hint that the pair might have been together in some capacity while she still was with Harry. And at number seven, a bug was named after her. <laughs> Listen, I know this one's out there, and it's really not even a secret or something you try to hide. I just thought it was fun, so I'm putting it in. I wish the video was titled Top 10 Madonna Facts because this lady is interesting, all right? Sue me. But anyways, in 2006, scientists named a species of microscopic water-dwelling organisms, which is most commonly known as the water bear after Madonna. The water bear's scientific name is, and bear with me, get it, Echinaiscus madonnae. Don't quote me on that. It's also called a tardigrade, which is much easier. <laughs> Although I'm sure it's because the researchers just loved Madonna's music, naming a bug after her is quite fitting, and I'd be proud to share a name with a water bear because it's basically invincible. Living for upwards of 120 years without food or water while withstanding harsh environmental conditions, these bugs are absolute tanks. For someone as resilient as Madonna, I'm sure she has some pride for her little bug, as both of them have managed to remain strong and consistent throughout their lives. Although it is weird that a water bug born on the same day as Madonna will outlive her by quite a few decades. Coming in at number six, she kissed Drake at Coachella and it was so awkward. Okay, this one definitely isn't a secret considering how extensive the media coverage was, but I'm struggling here, so give me a break. At Coachella in 2015, Madonna appeared during a Drake performance where she danced around him while he was sitting in a chair. Then she went right up to him and basically stuck her tongue down his throat on stage for all to see. The shocked look on Drake's face afterwards definitely wasn't pleasant, and the non-consensuality of it all was definitely an extremely hot topic. Coming in at number five, Madonna reminded Beyonce and Jay-Z that she is the master. Again, also not a secret because people ran with it, but Madonna has posted a Photoshop picture of Jay-Z and Beyonce gazing at photos of Madonna's album. She captioned it, quote, learning from the master. People were pissed that a white woman used the term master to show her superiority over two black individuals. In response, Madonna didn't delete the post, but she did edit the word master out of it, so it just said learning instead. I guess that works too. Coming in at number four, she didn't actually move to New York City with only $35. Okay, so this one may be a bit disputed, but there may not be tons of truth to the infamous up and coming Madonna story. The legend is that Madonna left her small rural town where she lived with her five other siblings and traveled to one of the most expensive cities in the world, 
New York. Apparently, she also only had $35 in her pocket and used that money to claw her way up to fame. It is a true rags to riches story about using pure willpower and drive to become one of the greatest stars of all time. But it may not even be true. In fact, Madonna's own brother disputes this story. He stated that, in fact, she had a few hundred dollars in her pocket given to her by family to help her start out, and she had some connections and contracts underway to immediately start as a backup dancer once she landed in the city. While it's still an extremely impressive feat to go from pure normalcy with little money to just how big Madonna is, the story of her only having $35 may be a case of broken telephone and people deliberately stretching the truth to make it seem even more impossible than it already was. In the number three, the staff hate her. It was reported that while Meghan and Harry were living in the royal palace with the other family members, the staff hated Meghan so much that they started to quit. In October of 2018, a palace aide and assistant named Melissa quit because of quote, Hurricane Meghan. Apparently Melissa was a longtime aide of the families and a trusted assistant, but that all changed when Meghan came into the picture and annoyed the staff with her requests. Apparently Meghan adopted a lot of West Coast habits like waking up at 5 a.m. and quote, bombarding aides with texts. One source told the Mirror, quote, Megan put a lot of demands on her and it ended up with her in tears. Melissa is a total professional and fantastic at her job, but things came to a head and it was easier for them to both go their separate ways. Apparently, Megan's tension with her staff also caused a rift between Megan and Kate. Kate apparently called out Megan for her strict and disrespectful behavior towards the staff. In a number two, inappropriate requests. On the day of Harry and Meghan's wedding, Meghan wanted everything to be exactly the way she liked it, which is usually what happens for normal weddings. Well, at royal weddings are much different, and most of what happens is passed down for generations and become very strong traditions for the royals. Meghan tried to change a lot of things around for her wedding, which people did not like. One of the most offensive requests was when Meghan asked for air fresheners to be deployed in the chapel where she was to get married. Apparently, the smell inside St. George's Chapel was not good enough for her. British Insider stated it does have somewhat of a musty smell, but it is not unpleasant, and it's expected for a building that's been around since 1475. A source said that Meghan wanted the staff to go around with spray guns to make it smell better, but the request was denied. The source said, quote, Royal household staff stepped in and told her office politely but firmly that this was the Queen's Chapel and it simply wasn't appropriate. I don't believe a request of that nature has ever been made before. And finally at number one, Meghan knew she wouldn't stay royal. The exit of Harry and Meghan from the royal family was devastating news to many. But after further investigation, it seems that Meghan might have known she was not going to be a royal for long. And she might have even concocted this scheme to get the most amount of press possible, then to leave the royal family and go back to Hollywood, where she's always wanted to be. When it was announced that the royals would be leaving, everyone blamed the decision on Meghan, as she was the only change in the family before Harry's formal exit. British columnists said that they think Meghan did not know the difference between being a celebrity and being a royal. Canadian millionaire Kevin O'Leary even slammed Meghan, saying she was the reason that nobody cares about the couple anymore. Quote, I think Megan got him into a bad place, and maybe she should do a little soul searching. She knew what she was getting into when she married him. Page Six also reported that Megan put some clothes in a storage location in Canada before she got married. She then decided to keep them in Canada, and they were sent to the couple's new Vancouver home after the Megxit announcement. Maybe Megan left them there because she knew she would be coming back. In a number 10, fired PR team. Before Amber Heard took the stand in her viral case against Johnny Depp, the actress decided to make a bold change and fired her PR team. Heard fired crisis management specialist Precision Strategies on April 28th after being subjected to bad headlines since the trial started. According to the New York Post, a source said Heard is, quote, frustrated with her story not being told effectively. Since support for Johnny Depp has significantly increased since the start of the trial, it's clear she desperately needed to change the narrative she's showing to the public. Insiders have stated that Heard was being represented by the top PR crisis firm, and the new firm has an uphill battle, as it's nearly impossible to undo the damage that's already been done to her reputation. It's claimed that she's hired Shane Communications as a replacement. In a number nine, her legal team. With all the conflicting stories that have come out about the testimony Heard's been telling in court, it's clear her legal team has an uphill battle in trying to defend her. During the trial, Heard's lawyers have been ripped to shreds, with the internet memeing their bad questions and hurting their professional reputations. Of course, her team has made a lot of blunders, but I'm sure it's not very easy to be in their position, representing someone that everyone is convinced is guilty. If Heard loses this trial, her and her lawyers will be a laughing stock. Even worse, aspects of their private life are being made public. For example, one TikTok went viral during the trial, showing a woman that looks shockingly like Amber Heard's lawyer, Elaine Bradelhoft, standing in a crowd of fans waiting for Johnny Depp. We can assume it was not her, 
but it is an invasion of privacy either way. And at number 8, Aquaman Executives. Since the Amber Heard scandal started, her role in Aquaman 2 has been a big point of conversation. Back when the internet was not sure which side to believe, DC announced that they were putting Amber Heard in the sequel film, which started a petition to get her cut from the film, which now has over 3 million signatures. Back when the execs made that decision, a producer for the sequel claimed that the social media hatred against Amber had no effect over their decision to cast her in the film, but I'm sure he's eating his words right about now. He said on a podcast, quote, I don't think we're ever going to react to honestly pure fan pressure. You gotta do what's best for the movie. We felt that if it's James Wan and Jason Momoa, it should be Amber Heard. That's really what it was. In light of the trial, it's been reported by a movie insider that Amber will apparently be featured in less than 10 minutes of screen time in Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Although I'm not sure if that decision was made before or after the social media firestorm. And at number 7, fame changed her. After news broke that Meghan was marrying Harry and would become a princess, Many sources came out saying that fame had changed her and she's all about climbing the social ladder. In December of 2017, news broke that Samantha Markle, who is Meghan's estranged half sister, was planning a tell all book about Meghan. In an interview with The Sun, Samantha said, quote, Hollywood has changed her. I think her ambition is to become a princess. Samantha also complained that Meghan forgot about her after gaining high society status. A source close to the family told E! News that Samantha cannot be trusted. However, Samantha is not the only person who says this about Meghan. Meghan's former best friend, Nikandi Pretty, told the Daily Mail in December of 2017, quote, There's Meghan before fame and Meghan after fame. And at number 6, chose career over marriage. Before Meghan was known for her role on Suits, she was actually married to a producer named Trevor Engelson for two years, before they eventually split. The split was apparently caused because of Meghan's work, and a former friend said that Meghan clearly chose her career and work over her husband. The former friend, who served as a maid of honor at Marco's wedding to Enkelson, told the Daily Mail, quote, It was such a shock when she told me they were getting divorced. Apparently, the stress of the long distance relationship is what caused the main issue. Meghan was living in Canada at the time, filming the show Suits while her husband was in LA. Apparently, Enkelson was heartbroken over the split and did not see it coming. Halfway number five, does not treat animals well. Meghan Markle likes to be known for her humanitarian and social efforts. One thing that Meghan is very proud of is that she adopted two dogs from a rescue shelter. But it seems that it was not happily ever after for the two puppies. After Meghan became a princess and was set to move to Kensington Palace in 2017, a spokesperson confirmed that Markle's retriever, Bogart, would not join her overseas. Apparently, Meghan felt that it was inhumane for the dog to take the long trip, along with the difficult approval process for dogs coming into the country. And Meghan left the dog with one of her friends in LA. Then later in December, Daily Mail reported that her other dog, Guy, broke both of his legs. We're not sure what the circumstances were, but apparently Meghan was quote, distraught over the accident. In at number 4, Meghan cut off her friends. After Meghan split from her ex-husband, it was said that she spent a lot of time in London. While there, she apparently formed a friendship with local TV personality Lizzie Cundy after attending an event together. Lizzie disclosed that Meghan wanted her to help finding a new man. Apparently, Meghan wanted him to be British and famous. In a 2019 tell-all, Cundy wrote about Meghan, quote, we were having a girly chat and then she said, Do you know any famous guys? I'm single and I really love English men. So I said, We'll go out and find you someone. Apparently, Megan was interested in soccer player Ashley Cole, but it didn't go anywhere. Then Megan apparently slid into the DMs of X Factor winner Matt Cardle in 2015, but shortly after that, Cardle just stopped replying. But apparently, after Harry showed some interest in Megan, Megan felt she had no need to stay in touch with Lizzie Cundy anymore and basically ghosted her. Apparently, Cundy asked Megan about Harry, then they chatted for a bit, but never saw each other again. Cundy added, quote, I was literally ghosted by her. In an Number 3. Milani Cosmetics Milani Cosmetics got involved in the case when Amber Heard's lawyers claimed that Amber would use their color correcting palette to cover the bruises Johnny gave her. During her trial, Amber's lawyers stated that Amber would walk around with makeup constantly in case she ever needed to cover a bruise that Johnny had given her. In court, the lawyer held up Milani Cosmetics all in one correction kit while telling the jury how Heard concealed alleged bruises on her face. Although it's important, the lawyer never claimed that Heard used that specific product. Even though the makeup brand could have just left it alone, they decided to get to the truth and prove that the makeup palette her lawyers were talking about was not even released until 2017, meaning there was no way she used it to cover bruises from Johnny. So clearly the Milani Cosmetics employees are Team Johnny Depp. And at number 2, Jennifer Grey. Jennifer Grey, the former fiancé of Johnny Depp's, is also being put into the conversation surrounding this trial. Grey has stated that the trial quote, breaks her heart and she wishes that it was resolved. 
Bray and Depp were engaged in 1989, adding that she quote, thinks it's sad and wishes everybody well. But she did admit that in her relationship with Depp, he was possessive and would get into fights at bars regularly. The pair were in a long distance relationship at one point during their trial, and apparently at this time he started to get in more trouble with the law, saying in her book, quote, Johnny was commuting every week back and forth from Vancouver, but had begun more and more regularly to be getting into trouble, fights in bars, skirmishes with cops. According to The Independent, she continued, quote, he'd start missing his flights home to LA, having overslept. When he did come home, he'd be crazy jealous and paranoid about what I'd been up to while he was gone, which is similar to what Heard has said about him. Amber Heard has testified that Depp was incredibly jealous of Heard's friend and co-star James Franco. And finally at number one, Amanda Decadene. Prominent Me Too supporter Amanda Decadene used to support Amber Heard in her claims against her ex-husband. But after she heard the audio recording of Amber being verbally harmful to Depp, she distanced herself from Amber. Decadene was supposed to testify in support of Amber at her trial, but decided against it in light of the new information. In a statement, Decadene said she was appalled and shocked to hear Amber Heard was speaking to Johnny. At number 10, Taylor Swift. Back in 2016, Kanye released a song called Famous that featured a lyric involving Taylor Swift that turned out to be quite controversial. Kanye's lyric essentially claimed that he and Taylor would have an intimate relationship because he made her famous. The fame, fame, in reference being to the BMA scandal. Remember that? Long time ago. Still in our memories. When the song was first released, Kanye said that he called Taylor before dropping the song to make sure that the lyric was okay and said it got her approval, but later Taylor's publicist came out to say that she was never made aware of the lyric saying that he made her famous. After Kanye was called out for lying, Kim K came out saying that she recorded the whole conversation and it showed that Taylor was actually made aware of the song and so Taylor was called out for lying instead. Finally, a new chapter has come out which reveals that Kanye never disclosed the entire lyric to Taylor and so that's why she called him out. This back and forth between Taylor and Kanye basically ended up with Taylor exposing the rapper for lying and warning us about the lengths that he and his wife will go to to save their asses even if they're wrong. At number 9, Chris Evans. I'm sure we're all familiar with Kanye's support for Donald Trump, at least before he decided to run for president himself. Kanye was seen sporting a MAGA hat in 2018 in a post on Twitter followed by a tweet where he said, quote, this represents good and America becoming whole again. We will no longer outsource to other countries. We build factories here in America and create jobs. We will provide jobs for all who are free from prisons as we abolish the 13th amendment. Message sent with love, end quote. Well, after Chris Evans saw this and had to speak up, denouncing Kanye's political beliefs beliefs and ideals, Chris tweeted a reply to the rapper's tweet where he said, quote, there's nothing more maddening than debating someone who doesn't know history, doesn't read books, and frames their myopia as a virtue. The level of unapologetic conjecture I've encountered lately isn't just frustrating, it's retrogressive, unprecedented, and absolutely terrifying. Chris essentially warned us about Kanye's political beliefs as he called them absolutely terrifying, which they were, seeing as Kanye said that he wanted to abolish the amendment, which abolished slavery. If you guys are enjoying the video so far, please consider giving it a thumbs up. We love seeing your positive feedback and it really helps out the channel. At number 8, John Legend. After another Twitter rampage about how much he supported Donald Trump, Kanye was getting some backlash from celebrities like Ice-T and Stephen Colbert, as well as John Legend. In a series of tweets from the singer, John spoke about how there are too many people in the world to ignore the presence of racism in society, seemingly pointing the finger at Kanye and his support of Trump's MAGA campaign. John went on to say, quote, I love that great, brilliant artists have the power to imagine a better future. Future, but artists can be blind to the truth. And ending his Twitter speech by saying, quote, the defining trait of Trump's campaign and political profile was his embrace of white supremacy. He made it clear every time he spoke, some serious cognitive dissonance to ignore that for the others you might find appealing, end quote. John seemingly condemned Kanye's support of Trump and how he was essentially fighting against the lives of so many black Americans and warned his fans about how dangerous this mindset can be. In at number seven, Kate James. Amber Heard's former personal assistant Kate James testified against her in court, claiming that she was full of anger and horrible to work for. James testified that she never saw Depp get physical with Heard, but she did see Heard enter blind fits of rage on many occasions. Allegedly, Heard once spit in her assistant's face when she asked her for a raise. Along with this, Heard descended into screaming fits of blind rage, sent incoherent text messages at 4am, and was often drunk and high on illegal substances. 
Then when asked about Johnny Depp, James had only positive things to say. James said when she interacted with Johnny Depp, he was very calm and almost shy, quote, like a total southern gentleman, James said. And at number 6, Cara Delevingne. Model Cara Delevingne is another celebrity who has been dragged into the case of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. It was claimed that Heard had a three-way affair with Cara Delevingne and Elon Musk. Allegedly, the three of them hooked up at Depp's downtown LA penthouse in late 2016 after Heard split from Depp. Sources close to Depp say he hasn't ruled out serving Delevingne with a subpoena to find out if she has any information that could prove useful to his case against ex-wife Amber Heard. After these rumors started to go viral, Musk shut down the claims. Page Six reported that he never slept with Kara and they were only ever friends, saying, quote, Kara and I are friends, but we've never been intimate. She would confirm this. He also said he did not start seeing Amber until a month after her divorce filing. I'm sure that Kara does not like her private life getting pulled into this mess, especially considering she likes to stay out of the spotlight. And in at four, the ACLU. After the lies Amber Heard told the ACLU, it's clear the organization does not like her and her broken promises. One of the worst cases of Amber Heard lying is in regards to her donations to the ACLU, since it's so easy to get to the truth. During her divorce proceedings, Amber went on record stating that she would donate the proceeds from her divorce to Children's Hospital of LA and the ACLU within 10 years. Since she won roughly $7 million, the organization was expecting $3.5 million in donations. During the recent trial, the ACLU said she gave them less than half of her $3.5 million pledge. ACLU executive Terrence Doherty said the nonprofit received four donations in Amber's name so far, totaling only $1.3 million. Only $350,000 of that came from her directly. Johnny Depp even wrote them a check for $100,000, and Amber Heard asked for that money to be credited to her. The ACLU says the other payments included $500,000 from a donor advised fund at Vanguard and $350,000 from a donor advised fund at Fidelity. The ACLU believes a large portion of this money came from Elon Musk, Heard's former boyfriend. At number three, Amber Rose. In October 2020, Kanye's ex Amber Rose came out in an interview accusing the rapper of bullying her for the past 10 years. She spoke out about her experience dating Kanye for two years, calling him a narcissist, and talking about how he's been speaking badly about her publicly for the past decade. She warned others about getting too close to the rapper, saying that unlike her, he has no compassion and attacks people. Going on to reference how he said he needed 30 showers after being with her, she called him out on that, inferring that this was not his mindset back when they were together, and saying that he quote, says things to make his wife more comfortable. The interview sort of pulls back the curtains on their relationship and shows how Amber has been dealing with it since they broke up in 2010. The fact that even though they've been apart for 10 years, she still gets bullied by him shows that Kanye has a mean side, and by coming forward about this, she's warning other people about getting too cozy with Kanye. Knowing this, it will be interesting to see what Kim might say after they get divorced. At number two, Drake. In 2018, Drake called Kanye out for backstabbing and betraying his trust, and he warned others about Kanye's schemes to use others for his own gain. In an interview, Drake spoke out about his beef with Kanye and how Kanye leaked some of his personal information, as well as being used by Kanye to make his album. Drake said that Kanye invited him to Wyoming, where he convinced Drake to tell him some stuff about one of his upcoming albums. They bonded, and Kanye gave Drake the song Lift Yourself, which he later released himself. Drake also told Kanye about his then secret secret son Adonis. When rapper Pusha T released a song accusing Drake of not writing his own songs, he felt hurt and blamed Kanye for this leak, and when he pushed back, another song was released telling the story about Drake's son. This information was given to Kanye in secret, so he knew that he'd been betrayed. Now he and other artists know better than to trust Kanye. And at number one, Kanye. This one might be a bit of a stretch, but just go with me on this one. I believe Kanye has been warning us about himself. Over the years, he's written songs that essentially paint him as someone with a god complex and a natural born leader. Years ago, we would have thought that this meant that he thinks he's better than everyone else and that his music is superior. He and some fans see him as a pioneering force in the rap world, so maybe this thought came about because of the imagery that he created with his music, painting himself as such a lively force. But now, I think he's been warning us of something much bigger. Kanye knew that he was destined for greatness, but we didn't know what his plans were until now. He has his sights set on the White House, and what bigger title is there in America than President, the ultimate leader? Kanye tried running in 2020 and will try again in 2024, so maybe this is what he's been warning us about all this time of talking himself up. He's called himself the new Moses and says that he will lead his people out of the struggle. He's advocating for musicians owning their rights to their music, so maybe this is just the beginning of Kanye really acting on the leadership role that he's been hyping up for so long. 